Good day, junior clinicians. So you are now junior clinicians because you are in your third year or third level. So in the new curriculum, you are considered as junior clinicians already. Okay, so this video is about objective refraction. So before we go to objective refraction, let me just uh, differentiate between subjective procedures and objective procedures. So when we say subjective procedures, these are procedures that need a patient's response. So for example, getting the demographic and case history. Demographic contains information of the patient like the name, age, um, address. And in the case history taking, you will be asking patients about his symptom. For example, the patient will tell you blurring of vision at far, headache, vomit sensation. Those are subjective responses from the patient as well as the subjective refraction. So the objective procedure is a procedure where we don't need a patient's response. We just do the procedure and we rely on the result. So the example of that is retinoscopy. Retinoscopy is the objective uh, procedure where we get to know the refractive condition and error of the patient without the patient's response. So I hope you can hear and see this video clearly. So going to objective refraction, uh, retinoscopy is the starting point for subjective refraction so meaning you cannot use objective refraction to refine subjective it should be objective first and whatever you result you have for objective will be somehow your basis for the subjective refraction so once you're once you did your tenoscopy, you will do the refinement, that subjective refraction. You cannot do subjective refraction and refine it using the retinoscope. So, dapat, it should be objective first, after objective, subjective. So, when we, uh, in regard to the AR or automated refraction, autorefractor is the same is both objective and um, somehow gamay just a little bit of subjective because you will be asking patient can you see the target inside and uh, but mainly it's um, objective and automated so nowadays uh, in the optical clinic they use the automated refractor just to um, listen the lessen the time spent to the patient so the more the less sorry the less time is spent to the patient the more patients you can check within the day so that's the some i can say some um business principle but for the clinical side is the more time is spent to the patient no so your patient will be your walking advertisement so they will um in this competitive um, time of optometry we should be different going to retinoscopy the purpose of retinoscopy is to objectively get the refractive um, error of the patient without the patient's response so again we live in a competitive um, time of optometry so we cannot really compete with the prices because it will it will make the business side of the optometry clash no so the more we give very low prices the more the the prices will go down 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 and then eventually it will um, put the business side above of optometry dead so, but we can compete with the services so retinoscopy now is is somehow like being replaced with automated refraction or automated refractor there's no bad about it because AR is really something up to date but the good side of um, learning retinoscopy even in this modern times is that 
you will be able to um, diagnose uh, other accommodative dysfunctions that the AR cannot really get or identify. And then, uh, with the retinoscopy, good, the more you do um, some test that is new to the patient, they will really ask and wonder, oh, that's different. I The other optical did not um, um, do that procedure to me. So what is it? What is, what is that? So the more interaction with the patient, the more you can educate the patient, the patient will be your regular patient. And, uh, and the, that regular patient will bring more patients to you also. So in the business aspect of optometry, the lesser you spend time with the patient, the more patients you can check within the day. But in the clinical aspect of optometry, we have to spend more time to the patient, impart more education, and eventually that patient will come back to you bringing other um, friends and family with her or with him. So that's the good thing of retinoscopy. And that's um, uh, my encouragement to you to become the best optometrist someday you have to learn retinoscopy. Diba, you will be checking patients like pedia, visual, um, mentally infirm patients, so you will be using the retinoscope for that. Okay? Let me just uh, show you some of the parts, the parts of the retinoscope. So this is my retinoscope. So this is a, this is a set. We call this as OR set, sorry, this is a sticker. So I bought a sticker when I was a student. This is a set. Uh, oh, we call this as OR set. So ophthalmoscope and a retinoscope in one. So I suggest you buy a set for your future um, clinical duty. Okay. So the brand of this is Welch Allen. Welch Allen is expensive but it is um, a good of uh, OR set and also the maintenance is good the parts are already available I bought this 2000 way back 2008 I guess or 2010 I'm not really sure so this reti is already old but I'm still using it in my clinic I already dismantled this. Sorry. So this is the body of your retinoscope. This is the body of the retinoscope. This is the body. We have the on and off button. On and off button. This one, in this area, um, the Welch Allen OR set they have the rechargeable battery so only one battery here but if you wish to use a disposable battery like this you just have to switch this oh, i don't know what they call this one part here you can just switch this para you can fit in two batteries inside Okay, and we have the spring cup in your note. You you, you read it, the spring cup. So obviously the spring cup is for the battery. Let me just assemble this for a while. And we have the ophthalmoscope head. So we already used the ophthalmoscope during our physiological optics time, if you can recall. And because you are now in another level of optometry, level up na. So we are moving on to retinoscope. So I'm just trying to fit it in. Lock. Okay. So you have now your retinoscope. 
So this is the peep hole. Row rest. And this is the brightness control. This is the sleeve. So the function of the sleeve is to move the um, reflex or the streak, the light of the reti up and down, rotate like that. And then we have the mirror inside. I don't know. I hope you can see the mirror inside. It has a mirror inside. And this is the it, this is a ma magnet. So where you can put magnetic cards. The patient will um, use as target for that's for step number five or dynamic rhinoscopy. Yeah. This is the retinoscope. So how should you hold the retinoscope? The same thing or the same hold that I taught you um, in ophthalmoscopy. Index finger of the pointing finger like that. So that it's easier for you to um, move the sleeve up and down and rotate. So what if you are left-handed? No problem, you can just use the other hand. So when you check patient for sotiletonoscopy, the same orientation, your right eye and the right eye of the patient. Okay? Okay, so this is the retinoscope. Again, it's a Welsh Allen retinoscope. There are lots of new brands of retinoscope. But I'm sorry, it's not that clear. Okay. Ayala mugmain ha. This is not for sale. Okay, this is the well, this is my um, retinoscope I put some stickers on it so like the stickers uh, the sticker is already yellow telling of its age you can also put a name no you can engrave a name so you can use retinoscope up to uh, duty time and uh, in board exam and even in your in your future clinic so you can really use the retinoscope. So it's good to invest for retinoscope and ophthalmoscope in your level. Okay, so I hope you learned something for the parts of retinoscopy. So the next video will be um, focusing more on the static retinoscopy. Thank you for listening.